It's the Daily Talk Show, episode 277. Gee, wow, we. I'm on to a mocker. <laughs> yeah, why are you doing that, mate? Uh, well, just because I think I. Um, is it less strong? No. What no, I think it just adds the sugar, so maybe it just. No, 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 not sugar, chocolate. What? Hang on. Do you think? 100% sugar. What do you mean? But the mocker. Chocolate do- isn't just not sugar. Well, chocolate could be. But you think that they've put a bit of sugar in it. I'd be really upset if I knew that. I think 80% of cafes where you go and you ask for a hot chocolate, it is the chocolate powder is probably 70% sugar. So a cappuccino. Yeah. The only reason you'd order a cappuccino really <laughs> is for the little bit of chocky on top. A little chocky on top. Just a little, you know, a little bit of that. I was doing the hand gesture of poor... Uh, doing the little, little shakes. <laughs> <sort of laughs> it's not the... It's not the most conducive hand gesture. Uh, did you notice? Did you notice in uh, Italy, mm. cappuccinos feel like they had more froth? Yeah, because you, you're drinking pretty much a bogan's mouthwash. Like in Italy, coffee is macchiato, short black, like espresso. Really, it's I felt like cappuccino because cappuccino I always saw as just very quickly. My fingers really sore. Why? What are you doing? See that there. Oh, that I've bit got there. like I've got a a what would you how would you describe that? It's just like a little blister. It's that's popped open. Do you know how I got that? Not doing hard work, that's for sure. Holding my water bottle when doing my half marathon walk on Sunday, <laughs> I had it I, in my I had it in my fi- I had like I hooked. Yeah. I've got like a hook on my water bottle, and I was just sort of walking along with it. And at the yeah. end of it, I'm like, how the fuck did that happen, bro? Your 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 hands haven't seen a day of hard work in their life. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, I actually was cutting up uh, pumpkin and I got got a blister as well. This is just complete amateur softies not holding their bottle right or just doing repetitive stupid shit, not feeling it. The other night I was watching A Current Affair. Were you? In in Australia it's... um, Hang on, were you at... I wasn't at mum and dad's. Holy moly, there's the... Well, Brie just... It was... um, Brie's getting into Married at First Sight. Horrendous show. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It's a show where people basically uh, have been unlucky in love. Yes. Unlucky in love. Has anyone said unlucky in love before reality shows? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that is true. But anyway, Unlucky in love. And so a bunch of people with unlucky in love yeah. and they meet someone for the first time. They've had like psychologists or whatever assess if the, who should be matched with who. Yes. And then it's a surprise and the they get ri- married. The OG show, because I, I remember watching this and Amy was saying this last night, that the one that was over in the UK, they actually it wasn't as sort of joke and sort of silliness value because like on this one they've got the virgin mm. and so they get building out all these characters like a good reality show does. But the original was like um, psychologists looking at sort of the different traits of these mm. people and really trying to match them up so that they are in love. But then they get married. It's it, all bullshit. It's become more beauty in the geek yeah, yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah. This all this area has started to lean towards uh, shameless yeah. podcasts. This is what they talk they about. Cover the, they cover the important topics. Well, it's dumb, dumb shit for smart chicks. Yeah, is their their I, whole. A lot of smart people like dumb shit. Yeah, because it's an escapism from being having to sort of have all the answers. I'm a dumb dude who likes smart shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pre- that's a pretty good portrayal. It's a pretty. Fa- I love books. We we spoke we spoke about yeah. it with Peter Shepard. Well, I think we're two dumb dudes giving it a crack, mm. and so and that's why I've I've always like I was big. On, I wanted to be a coach. I wanted to be the Peter Shepard, mm-hmm. uh, but I was too immature. Well, you went to the coaching institute. Yeah, I paid five grand, and um, you know. Lost Paid them. it off. How much was it? Like a monthly payment? I thing? think that yeah. So this is a, a business in Australia that offers up uh, a coaching degree. Not that it's. I mean, it's their certification. I don't know what it means. I don't know if you can call it a degree. Certificate. Yeah, well, they call it that. Really? You can do the diploma. You can do all the. Really? I, and you did a degree. So you've got a degree. No, I actually didn't complete it. You didn't even complete that. I completed the the stuff I needed to do, but I just didn't end up doing it. Anyway. What was the degree? What did it actually require? Do you remember? There was like a year long one or there was like a six month one. What did you do? Just different tiers and you had to do a lot of practical coaching one-on-one. I had a really bad experience actually. And the power of thought was at play in this moment. So I, 
I did the weekend workshop Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you pay your five grand, you get this sort of like intensive eight hours a day, mm-hmm. sort of quite emotionally driven. You're doing coaching, you're kind of having these breakthroughs. And it's, I think it's based on how tired people are and how sort Just of open, open people are to sort of be in this mindset. But this woman was like, you changed me. You changed me. Oh, that's nice. I was like 19 at the time or 20 or something like that. Big, big ego boost for you? It was really, we were doing shit like, okay, so I've just turned towards Josh, face me. And this is what we we're doing. Like there was this one session. I'm sitting there with this woman okay. I've never met before. Yeah. And Do I our, hold your hands? our knees are almost touching. We're looking towards each other. Yep. Just resting your part, your your knuckles on your thighs so yep. your palms to the ceiling mm-hmm. and it was really just like we did this thing where we just looked in each other's eyes and so it was just looking into each other's eyes for a while and it was weird and so that they just like trying to get you to connect and then it's about coaching and sort of just being open and so there's some nice things it was like probably a lot of manipulation techniques going on mm. but there is something to be said about sort of being super present can we turn around now yeah we can turn Thanks. around but it was it was weird we did that like doing that with a complete stranger mm. is was kind that of, what changed her that bit no because then we did the coaching bit where it's like you need to now go on this journey with them asking questions no judgment just being open to sort of navigate their thoughts which so that they are doing a good thing coaching people but it's like the personal training courses. Yeah. There will probably be one coach out of 25 yeah. suckers so what was paying the, five grand. What was the bad do the job. You were saying that it, you had a bad experience. So post uh, course, you get assigned a person mm-hmm. to do the sessions with. Yeah. I got assigned a fucking person that lived in Thailand. Really? She'd come over to do the course. Lovely, sweet girl. Could not remember for the life of me what she looked like or her name now because it was so long ago. But Would have been great to call her out. <laughs> no, it was nothing to do with her. Yeah. It was like my annoyance was I'm doing this course, I'm paired with somebody who can hardly speak English and I'm needing to try and coach them every single week, a couple of times a week. Do you think you would almost change that? I almost said that as exciting now. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, that's cool. Uh, maybe I can, because I know a little bit of Saudi crap. Mate, Kapun it's like crap. fucking learning how to edit on a MacBook Pro that's set to French. I had no idea what I – like I was trying to it, – it threw me off because I wasn't present. You're trying yeah. to be present and you're like thinking, what are they saying? Like they're not actually understanding my words and then you start trying to talk very slowly. I, I don't know. It was – yeah. I wonder yeah, what Peter Shepard would do. I did, acknowledge it, I did acknowledge it at that moment as like, oh, this is a challenge. So there, there is the like I'm making excuses by finding something. But I was like, it kind of is. I paid fucking all this money – and I couldn't be put with somebody that I could really give this a crack with. Maybe that's a story. I think that it sounds like a story. Like even yeah. you saying it now, I feel like it's changing maybe a perception Not, of how yeah, you Yeah, but I just remember how I feel. So I'm taking yeah, the, yeah. how I felt and how I think about it from a sort of zoomed out position. And I still feel like it's, it's super hard. It's, mm. It was super hard and I just – I was young. Anyway, so that was one of – that was the thing. But other than that, like doing the, the course and sort of like shifting gears in what I was doing in my life because I was like hell-bent on becoming a presenter and working in radio and on TV and I took the foot off the gas. Mm. And when I took the foot off the gas, Shit I got a job in radio. Started to work out. Yeah, so it's like it was like now I'm going to be a co- like look into this coaching stuff and commit to this, pay this money. And as soon as I did that and I stopped thinking about it, I, I fucking got a call. Hey, do you want to come be the roving reporter for the rush hour? And which so is the, on Triple M. Yeah, and then I got yeah job on radio, which was it, it, so weird where it's like, yeah, the shifting away from the thought brought it to me. I can't even remember how we got to that story about wanting to be a coach. Is it something that you the, – the course stuff? Self-development. That's what I was thinking about because I was thinking about – when I wanted to be, like I've always wanted to do self-development, yeah. but I think the only way I can do it, bringing back to where, just two dumb blokes, yeah. is like my level of self-development that's on my YouTube channel is essentially self-development for dummies by a dummy. Yeah. So it's like low basic stuff where it's like, I'm only just figuring this out as well. So it's not like, I think there's uh, it's hard when you're, a, you know, this sort of superior figure that has it all worked out. It's um, there's a lot of responsibility there. The train. I like the idea of doing courses, but then I feel like halfway through, I always don't like the pace annoys me. Yeah. Well, you. 
it's a structure that you're sticking to. Yeah, it's a curriculum that you have to follow. We've been no good at that in our in our time. Well, I've got I actually pay for that um, for masterclass dot com. Yeah, so I need. Yeah, we actually we need to use it. Ninety seven. I'll get. I'll send you the He'll link. He'll get more use out of it. Well, because the thing is, I got it. I think they had some sort of promotion, but it runs through the app store subscription. Oh, so you still pay? No. Well, so it's it doesn't. I looked it up. It doesn't renew until July. Okay. But it's one of those ones where it's like it's a yearly fee. Mm. It's probably like. Four hundred Australian dollars or mm. something, and so it's it's so annoying if that was to like re um <laughs> just tick over tick over. It goes it's an annoying it's, one to tick it's over. Very annoying, but that's got you can learn how to shoot basketball hoops with Steph Curry mm. or be a film director with that guy from Breaking No from Breaking Bad from Sons of Anarchy. One of those directors, super talented dudes, yeah. talking you through some you know. Hard shit. Mm. So, yeah. Have you felt like – I think you've done a a better job than I have on the New Year's resolution Mm. front. Mm. Are you feeling feeling good about it? Oh, yeah. We're in uh, February now. Well, it's very basic ones that I've stuck to. and But they've all been flow ones. They've all been the ones that then open up – to do the other stuff. Keystone habits is what they call it in the power of habit, which yeah. is small habits which then lead to bigger changes. Mm. So uh, the idea of uh, filling up uh, your water uh, regularly or always – so a habit could be uh, never letting your water get past a certain line or whatever before mm. you fill it up. It creates all of these habits where you go, you fill it up more mm. and you're, you're moving I, more. I'd probably explain – for me, the keystone habit um, explanation is, for instance, m- the exercise every second day, mm-hmm. and I can't miss. I can't have more than one day off. Yeah. So I could train two days in a row, then have mm-hmm. a day off, but I've got to train the next day. Doing that then flows on to how I'll eat. Yeah, exactly. The choices I'll make, mm-hmm. what I'll do as far as sleep. Yeah, you know, so then I think, yeah, it's that like flow on effect. Yeah, exactly. So that's one of them, the exercise mm. and no drinking. Mm-hmm. So these are all, that's a, for me, keys don't have it because it just means I haven't eaten Maccas <laughs> after being boozed. Oh, yeah, of course. Haven't, yeah, just made silly food choices. Do you think that you've um, mentally it's been easy doing all yeah. these? Yeah, I don't know why though because sometimes I find it, found it hard. I've set it very low. Mm. So it's like, so is this less gym than you would normally do if you were taking something on or no? It's, Have you done it's the more two? gym because it's consistent. Mm-hmm. It's l- less gym because in the past I've trained more. But it's – so it is more gym. That's the thing. It's You're more going constant. to – okay, yeah. I'm going to the gym more often and ex- or doing some form of exercise. Like on Friday night I went – I had an exercise and I'm like, I need to get out. And so I walked for over an hour. Oh, that's cool. Which I would never normally an hour do. hour walk. Which I'd never normally do mm-hmm. for me. Yeah. So it's yeah. yeah the Keystone habit stuff. And where do you really think? Because you've said you've fallen short with some yeah. of yours. Which I don't. Th- that's the thing. Like you can fall off in February. You can go. Mm-hmm. I fucked it. But it doesn't mean. But yeah, doesn't, I see it as like over. temporary. Yeah, I see it as like temporary failures to work out what needs to be in place. Mm. For me, I think getting up early makes a massive difference, which mm. means going to bed earlier, which then. Feeds into a bunch of things. So it's like actually having some consistency. Mm. So because we've been house-sitting and all, all those different bits, they're all excuses. But I haven't allowed myself to be mindful on all of the, those elements. Mm. So it's like it's not like I get up at the same time every morning. Yeah. Every night it's like what time am I going to get up today? So what I'm really looking forward to is the keystone habit of being out of bed mm. by six that type of thing. Mm. The well, cold shower, I'm doing cold, cold showers every day, but it's not fucking hard when it's like 40 degrees. What do you, has this been a thing? Uh, was, was this on the list? No, but it was easy to, the funny thing is when I don't do one type of goal, mm. I will then compromise and do something else. So make other improvements. Mm. So it's like, well, if you're not going to go to the gym, what other smaller sacrifice could you make yeah. today? Yeah. And so for me, it's like, oh, actually, and I've been feeling good. Like I've been a bit achy or whatever. I think maybe from walking the you, half. You walked 21 kilometres on Sunday. Yeah. And so the feeling a bit sore from that, but 
just before going to bed, yeah. being efficient in the shower can waste so much time in the shower. <laughs> Whereas if you have it in the cold, on the cold, yeah. especially no fucking around, no squeegees. <laughs> Well, you closed up. You just <laughs> <laughs> just in and out when it's cold. Yeah, yeah. And well, so Matt Diavella is doing um, cold showers every day for thirty, 30 days. days. I mean, he's in winter in LA, which isn't it's in like, LA. It's like it's September in Melbourne, in yeah. Australia, like nice and warm. Mm. It's um, I I did. I so I worked out on Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was hot, really hot. I usually wouldn't have gone if I hadn't done that every second day. We, um, and I. Tried a little hot cold shower after the train. I was like, oh, no way. Really? <laughs> Not momentum, for everyone. Momentum is everything though. Yeah. If yeah. you can build up momentum, then it, like you look at this podcast, mm. even adding video becomes less mm. less and less friction. Mm. Um, well, consistency builds the momentum. Yeah. And so if you take, the ta- take off the table the big like – crazy you know crazy shit like mm. crazy goals yeah. and you actually just chip away in the long term you've done the crazy goal by chipping away and yeah. creating the momentum well find trying to find an apartment i feel like has taken a lot of weekends and time <sighs> and so once that's gone i mean these or is that just a story i mean it is 100 percent a story but stories can work yeah so well, so, uh, mate <laughs> the thailand thing yeah. it's uh <laughs> <laughs> well that's like yeah it's it's mindset and i understand that it's like I've been getting into a negative mindset about it. However, it feels like some of these things that we are doing Mm. in regards to the podcast and adding video, like it feels like improvements happening. Do you do you feel that? Mm. Like it feels like we're like only a couple of things off before it's like really chooching and moving along. I think the problem with the small implementation. consistently is that it doesn't feel like the big thing yeah. it doesn't feel like fuck eight weeks five days a week training i'm doing it i yeah. told josh i'm in there yeah. i'm talking about it it doesn't have the same reward mm. um this the instant gratification and the instant gratification is a lot of the times the thing that will create the energy or motivation mm. so it needs to come from another place which is mm. consistency which i've done all of that and it's and it's definitely not long lasting mm. the, f- the thing about the year off alcohol is that I've just got it out, but it's long enough to be a solid period of time. So what has been the learning? When are you most likely to fall off the wagon? Uh, definitely not the alcohol thing. I just it's That a, seems easy. Um, yeah, it feels really easy yeah. now that I've said and I can have the banter of, yeah, we'll have a beer in 2020. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't... Do you reckon in 2020 you'll start drinking again? Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. And whether I do then or not is another thing. Summer of 2020... Down the beach, mm-hmm. first week of Jan, hot. Getting plastered. N- not even, just some cold beers with some nuts. <laughs> it's such a good combo. Some yeah. chips, some Red Rock Deli, oh, lime and pepper. Red Rock, is that outside Australia? Do I don't know. Have, yeah, maybe. How do you describe them for people oh, who've never had? They're just a crisp, a chip. They're just, oh, just oven baked. Mm-hmm. But they're just flavoursome chips. Yeah. Really good flavors. Oh, I'm just. I really want one now, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So I can set that away. But I haven't. Yeah, I don't know. Do you think your mood wise? Do you think it's positive on your mood mm. because it's like you're in control, or mm. do you feel like ego depletion, which is like you're running out of willpower because you're having to use so much for all these things? No, nah, not really. I what I've noticed though from not drinking and exercising more is how I still struggle with feeling anxious about shit and not being in a clear mindset. It doesn't mindset. all go away. That's the interesting thing. Well, I, what I've learned, the learning is <laughs> when you f- throw things like getting wasted and then feeling, for me, yeah. feeling fucking emotional or like just short and shitty at things and just not being clear and then being sleep deprived because you've gone out all night just getting fucked up. Like that, wh- how bad I would feel then mm. with how good I'm treating myself now and how bad I can feel. I'm not, I don't feel that bad, but I just look at myself and go, imagine if I added all those other things. Yeah. I just wasn't listening to myself. Yeah. You know, I wasn't listening to my body and I still probably don't on the weekends when I eat fucking four pizzas. But Is that what you're you having a bit of a cheat? Like oh, what's your current no, strategy? I, just, I enjoy it more doing it on the weekends based on not doing it during the week mm-hmm. and training. And so I do, I do enjoy it a bit more, but I'm not like... I'm not going, I'm not waking up eating peanut M&Ms for breakfast. 
<laughs> I did that once. <laughs> you did. I mean, it's a fucking great. Yeah. I love that. Fat Fridays. Do you think uh, the amount of shit? That were, like Mister Ninety Seven <laughs> the other day did a video of how many bites Gemma did more bites, <laughs> but to be fair, she was taking smaller bites. She, yeah, she was li- little nibbles. It's interesting seeing Gemma's little nibbles like a mouse, and then seeing your slow but large bites. They were deliberate though; they're very intentional. I've been blown away how quickly you can eat something though. Yeah. But it's not like you're messy being a pig. No. I'm just blown away by how how quick it, like it's, it's opening almost, my mouth. So I have to tell my son, chew, chew your body, food, chew. Yeah. Because he just takes it. And so that maybe there's a bit of the... I should try and be more deliberate in, in regards to that. I mean, it's got, it's maybe you need that or maybe I need something different. But people do the counting my chews. Yeah. Like, have you heard of those dudes? Yeah, but the thing is I'm trying not to overthink yeah. at the moment. Uh, that's a problem. So counting my chews seems quite fucking... There's a title <laughs> of the show, 97, Counting My Chews. <laughs> like, it, doing that feels like it is... In one regard, it's being intentional. Yeah. But in it, from the other side, it's fucking obsessive. Yeah. Like well, I'm trying to let, like, uh, trying to think less, like overthink things mm. in reg- or not feel guilty around mm. eating yeah. or food. But I don't know whether that's just going to mean, mm. like, I well, fucking get fat. It's going to add an additional layer of thought, which is like an obsession. Well, so how, well, no, so it's not being, obs- so I'm trying not to be obsess- obsessive. But the problem is that then my obsessiveness is the way that I keep in order. Mm. So it's like me not having breakfast where I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to be normal and I'll eat bread. Like if I'm hungry right now, I'll eat breakfast. Mm. But then but I think that that will actually just lead to me putting on weight. I don't think so. I think okay. I, I think if, if you just approach it with that and that's your single thought because if the approach was I'm just going to eat breakfast now, mm. what that looks like each day is this specific thing. Yeah. To start the day with, so then it's not open to, well, my rules to eat breakfast and there's a Macca's drive through for a bacon egg yeah. McMuffin, McMuffin, which I, I mean, I, I'd probably get it with you. Mac but muffin. Yeah, but I think that that's where, how do you not be a psycho? How do you not come across? Because mm. you've even said like, oh, like about my routine that I've created. You've What have you said? It's like, it's pretty intense or some, something around, what have you th- like thought about? No, no I don't think was so. Was it negative? It was like... I think it's just looking at sort of when do you veer off? Like with, how do you not – Well, it's beca- regimented or whatever. I think part of it is working out when to – when can you flex, mm. like as in be flexible. Mm. When can you say, all right, um, I've been using flex too much now. It's, yeah. I've confused the <laughs> actual <laughs> – when can you be flexible? Yeah. I think, um, for instance, uh, fasting and stuff. Like I think it just all needs to be dialed in. I think it's so determined based on who you're around mm. – what your environment is, mm. and then changing those things, you know. Yeah, what, what is the answer, though, if you are strategic but you also want to be flexible? I think maybe there's the… Well, working out where is the flexibility. So maybe it's eating out socially but not eating as much when you're on your own mm. versus like eating socially and then coming home and eating again, mm. potentially. Yeah, this external pressure on all the things we do because… But then we've only got ourselves to rely on. Mm. So for all the um, but news it's not, resolutions. But that's not, but in saying that, we also have like families and we have mm. expectations. And so when you're catching up with Amy each evening, mm. if, if the one area is that you guys are having dinner together and that's like a way to connect, mm. but you're like, oh, I had a big lunch, so I'm not going to eat dinner. Mm. How, do, how do those social interactions play out? For me, well, no, just in ge- like in that sort of general idea, I mm. think that it's so many of the "Am I going to eat something?" is determined based on what's everyone else doing around me. Yeah, yeah, going. But then again, if that is delivering up a shit result for you, there's the problem. oh yeah, well, exactly. I That's don't think that you can. Li- I think that it's finding the external forces mm. and the internal need and trying to align them as much as possible. Mm. So if you are in a family or you've got a partner who really cares about cooking food and and um, uh, eating together, but then you're that means that you probably shouldn't be having a massive lunch. Like if you're trying to be calorically mm. responsible or not mm. having too many calories, you probably should have a smaller lunch so that you can still do that. Yeah. I think that's what I struggle with is trying to work out like 
trying to keep everyone fucking happy or yeah. thinking about like, oh, what's the – and but also I enjoy the food. There is it, but you, you could be, you know, swimming the other direction. Down, you could be swimming – upstream everyone's going downstream so mm. they're not thinking and you are and that so that's all you've done yeah it's it affects people around you mm. i know that because if you're the drinking thing is one mm. for me who has and then so then what do you do because i think that it's like the uh, we're all on a different path mm. so whilst it might not make sense for you to be eating bread does that mean that there's no bread in the house yeah i guess <laughs> that, that is it there is bread in my house and I haven't been eating it during the week. Yeah. That, but we should, it's okay to have bread because you could say I need bread. I have said in the past I need everything out of my house mm. because I'll eat it if it's there. Which but is like a hard – like it's impossible for everyone around you. And it, but I think it's a, a dumb strategy based on how the world works. Shit gets well, given to your partner that she brings home because she's, you know, been given some freebies, works at a radio station mm. and has got some donuts. But you can't – then it's not It's not her fault. But then – so for some people, they're like, I, need, I can't have it in the house. Yeah. So then it's it creates an expectation not just for you mm. but for everyone else around you around – it's controlling your environment mm. because psychologically it's easier. If it's not there, then you don't – it's less pressure on you but it also has implications of the people you're around. Yeah. The f- I mean the food one is so complex. Mm. Fuck the amount of time I waste on food. What thinking about thinking it? Thinking about thinking about it. Yeah, it's annoying as fuck. <laughs> it's annoying because why are you thinking about it? Well, it's because I don't want it. Like I, like I've been one hundred and twenty kilos. Mm. So it's like thinking about okay, wh- how many how many mistakes off am I from getting back to that mm. weight? Mm. Yeah, oh, I, I don't have the answers. Mm. Five. <laughs> five, five more Fat Fridays. Five, five more Fat, fat Fridays. Fat Fridays was your idea, bro. <laughs> well, we need to we need to rein in Fat Friday. We need to work out a way. Of, or, but the thing is, if it was just contained to Friday, it would be fucking fine. But it never is. Yeah. Well, that that's a rule that all these the, things, like all of it, every single problem, mo- like everyone has, can a- be answered by some easy combination of, or just do this, 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 and this. Yeah. But but then, that's why and that's why I've up. struggled to understand and articulate why it is that I'm now sticking to this. Mm. Is it that I have a kid? Is it that – like why am I not I think drinking? the focus – I think the good thing with the situation you're in at the moment is nothing's changing. Yeah. You've, like you know that there's going to be – like it's easier to commit to things where it's like, you know what, this is me for the year. This mm. is where I'm living. This is what's happening. This mm. is how I get to work. This is – how I'm cooking my food. Nothing is gonna, mm-hmm. going to really change. I think that the harder part is when it, when we're in flux, when we're in cha- – like I think when people are travelling, they struggle to stay healthy and it's because yeah. it's like they're consistently changing. Yeah. And so I think that the, the responsible thing would be to say, okay, well, this is my situation now mm. and so I'm going to eat this way. I'm going to work out a mechanism to make this work now so that – when I have X, Y, and Z, it's easy. Mm. But I think that that's – it's a lot of fucking cognitive load. So a month in, do you completely scrub out all your New Year's resolutions and start again once you've got your set up and your house and your Well, in? I think it's – yeah, I think what it's learning. Do? I think it's learning about, okay, what's worked, what hasn't worked, mm. how, why have – like why have things failed and then saying, okay, well, what is the – what's the – not the end game, but like what's the ultimate lifestyle? Like at the moment, um, uh, say if we're doing a shoot or whatever, mm. because we're just getting back into the year and we've got new gear and all that sort of thing, it feels like there's friction. It's hard. We're working out what's the process. Whereas like when you have a something for a long time, it's like plug the thing in here, I do this thing. Mm-hmm. And so there's a part of it which is getting familiar, even filming this, where it become, like we get into a cadence, we get into a momentum that then allows us to correct other things. Yeah, I think the feeling though is replacing that with something else. Like the feeling of getting used to what we're doing here will then just be replaced by that. Yeah, we then create another bit of somewhere else. Yeah. And so the, that's where it comes from. It's not going to be the answer, mm. but yeah, 
it's it's for very complex. Mm. But yeah. I think that d- definitely um, re-looking at my resolutions and saying, okay, what are the things – I reckon leading with what's easy for me because mm. I reckon part of it is like what is what are the easy things that you're not doing right now? Mm. I think we focus on the hard shit. There's actually like – heaps and heaps of really, really easy things that are such small um, like examples where it's like, oh, I can actually, like this is so easy. And well, drastic change makes a lot more noise than the smaller yeah. stuff. Well, getting, getting, up at, getting up at 6 a.m. Yeah. is actually really easy. Yeah. Even if you're tired. So I think that like those little examples where it's like, what are the things that I could do? And I'm trying to do that, which is like, what are the things that I could do now that's actually, that doesn't even, rec- like if I'm not going to do the thing, mm. what is a level of improvement? Yeah, one make? back. Uh, we got a, well, this came through on my personal mm-hmm. uh, Instagram account from Eric, but he's been listening to the show. This is, he commented on a photo of Gemma from last week's Fat Fridays. He said, dude, it was weird and amazing to hear someone say, I've never been to the USA. It's like we over here are so wrapped up in our own shit, we forget there's a whole world besides us. It's <laughs> one so of, interesting. One of it? my favourite um, comics said in a podcast recently uh, something about speaking American. Yeah. It was like legit. There's many English. Mm. But he's saying speaking American. I just thought it was very telling for an American. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, that is like... But the interesting thing is people who listen to this podcast are clearly not that, right? Like they're examples of people who are like to seek out something of two Aussie dudes yeah. in Melbourne talking shit. Yeah. Means and can understand you, us. Yeah. But I mean, there is a lot going on over in the States yeah. to not leave. It's big enough. It's big enough. Go to Hawaii for a beach holiday. You have Go Amazon, to the snow. Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. <laughs> yeah. It's all there. <laughs> and we also got um, from Kyle who has uh, he's sent emailed, through. Hi at the daily talk show.com. He's just shot us a bunch of questions. Uh, Pick one. What do you want all to right, answer? Um, have you ever been to Adelaide, my city? <laughs> that was, no, I've never been to Adelaide. Have you ever been to Adelaide? Yes. Oh, yeah, you went for the... Clips or 500. Yeah, not to drink Bundy cans. Nah. To actually for for work. I'd love to go there. For, I would love to go, Kyle, I'd love to go to Adelaide for Fringe. Oh, there's a Fringe, fringe Festival. festival. Oh, yeah. It is the Fringe Festival. Is it? That's like the main one oh, is in Adelaide. Uh, he, what's the, this is one other. Have you have the, either of you watched anime before? Thoughts? No. No. I'm, I'm not a big... Um, I look like an anime guy. <laughs> you do? Is What is it? The glasses? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah, been never, never been into it. Mm. It's weird. I mean, it's like a subculture. Cartoons in general, not really. No. I would love to though. I think that there's something in being able to unwind. I've gone into the Calm For, app. What's Calm app? You know, what? the Calm, calm app. app. Oh, sorry, the Calm what's, app. What's Calm app? I su- yeah, you heard Calm app. The Calm app. Calm app. Are you looking at the Calm map? Calm app. Calm Calm. Have you have you paid for any of the bits? Uh, for what? I've for got the one. I've got a Stephen Fry story about lavender. I think. No, I don't. I have nev- I don't even have the Calm app. What do you use? Headspace. No, Waking Up by Sam Harris. What does so Amy use? Does she, she uses use Headspace. 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 Okay. Headspace. So you can, yeah, there's a meditation app. Is there a meditation app? That you've yeah, got? it's a meditation app, but it's cool because it like has um when you actually turn it on, yeah, it starts like straight away. Um, play, it says take a deep breath. It starts playing like different um, sounds and shit. Do you pay for that? Uh, no. So this is free. Interesting. They've got a section where you click sleep and then you can... Um, Put you to sleep. You have sleep stories. So the one at the moment, Stephen Fry talking about... Um, oh, he's telling a story. Yeah. La- uh, lavender fields. It got me right into lavender. <laughs> I was thinking about it like it would be cool if I one day when I have a garden... Have some lavender? Yeah. And I was like, you know I what? Think it grows well. You don't need, it doesn't need too much attention. I literally had a, uh, just a moment where I'm like, why am I so scared of bees? <laughs> why are you so scared of bees? I don't know. They're getting stung. But right. I was like, I was actually like, you know what? Next time I see a bee, I'm just going to be chill about it. With the amount of uh, fear in people, unless you've got uh, a severe an, allergy. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you'll die if mm. you have a bee. I, I pushed a kid into a pool because he had a bee on his head and he. How uh, old were you? Uh, oh, we were seven, okay. all right. He he you was severely like, you severely were thirty, and he was five. He just throw. He was severely allergic to bees, okay. so I, I did him a solid. But with the amount of people being scared by them, and how many? 
like mm. how often you've actually been bitten. I feel like or I need stung. Get, I feel like I need to get stung as an adult. We we just pack on this garbage. My son, he's like loves spiders. He's got no idea what they do, but he loves them. I got bitten by a white tail. It, Did you? Yeah, gave me asthma. It's not good. Yeah. It's a daily talk show. Hi at thedailytalkshow.com <laughs> if you want to send us an email. Have a great uh, rest of your Wednesday. Yes. We'll see you tomorrow. See you guys. Catch ya.